Good morning. Welcome back. A Fox News alert. Some of the suspects linked to an extremist Muslim compound could soon walk free. That's right. A judge agreeing to release four of the five on $20,000 bond saying that they are not a danger to the community. But if they were caught training children to be terrorists and carry out school shootings, how is that possible? National security analyst Ryan Morrow has been helping authorities with the case. He joins us now to discuss... Are you surprised by this news? I'm shocked. My mind is blown, and I'm wondering why I even try anymore. I mean, it's, it's really that bad. When I talk to law enforcement, it's basically what they said to me, too. Uh, they're like, how is it possible that this judge, who's, who must be insane, looks at all this and says, well, this is not a direct threat to the community? And you look at the statement that she said, and it's basically, well, you couldn't show evidence of a specific plot. You, do, you couldn't lay out the plan. You don't need to know the plan. Look at what they were already doing. Look at their ideology. Uh, they're just insane as a cult, but then also had this, all these Islamic extremist ties, which we learn more about every single day. So when you look at things like this, sometimes there's a question of, are you going to blame the judge for this, or do you blame the prosecutor for not making the case? You think that in this case, the prosecutor made a fine case of saying, yeah. these, are, these are very dangerous people that need to stay in jail until we can figure out what happened. For and me, you're saying it, yeah. the judge has thrown this all out of whack. Yeah, and I try to see both sides in most things, yeah. not this time. If you need to test someone for common sense, you put this in front of them and you say, should these people be out in the community? And it's even worse than uh, I'm explaining because they got a signature bond, which basically means you have to sign a document saying, no, seriously, I'll come back to trial. <laughs> and then there's a financial penalty if you don't do it. So they don't even have to put money down. And right. you have these known extremists that, that are part of this cult where part of the reason that that kid, uh, that the toddler who passed away was denied medicine is because the cult leader believed uh, that that kid was, when he died, would become Jesus, resurrect, and then tell them what targets to bomb. Become it's Jesus? Just, it's yes. crazy. It's insane. Like, yeah. I don't think rational minds can really fathom the extent of that. Um, what do you think should happen to these people? Well, definitely lock them up and, and not have them out in the community. Uh, it, it's just unbelievable to me the excuse here. And part of the way the defense argued was, well, this must be like Islamophobia. They actually said if they're white Christians, this wouldn't happen. <laughs> yeah, it would. Uh, so I would just want them locked away as much as as long as possible. This is insanely dangerous. I don't understand one thing though. You just said that they, they think the kid's going to become Jesus. Are they yeah. are they Muslim extremists? Are they? Confused? I mean, what, what exactly do they believe here? Uh, it's a good uh, question. Something that's because not making any sense. Islamic extremist end times prophecies uh, say that Jesus is going to come back and basically behead their enemies and lead this end times war and crush Christianity. Really? Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's wacky. Yeah, you learn something new every day. How yeah. much more do you think this is going on like this across the country that we just maybe don't know about yet? Oh, definitely going on much more. It's just that the evidence was so strong when it came to this case and the threat was so high that you're hearing about it. The smarter jihadists don't make mistakes like this. They're not as blatant as this. And there have been groups that have been trying to establish these types of private communes going back to the 80s. And that includes somewhat Imam Siraj Wahaj, whose kids, his right. family members are part of this compound. It's just that He's slick, and he's willing to lie, and he doesn't go off into the deep end of the deep end, into this cult territory, where it becomes clear to everyone we need to do something about it. These people now are facing, you know, probably a pretty hefty jail sentence, uh, and we've seen what people like this in the past have done. What happens if one of these people gets out? Are they going to be followed? Are they going to be watched? Can they just go get a gun and, and shoot something up? I mean, is, is, is that a danger? Well, you have to assume that they still have a network within the right. radical Islamic community that does these types of advanced training. And some people will say, well, they're on house arrest. They have to wear an ankle monitor. You can cut that off. I talked to police uh, sources about this, and they said, look, we know people that have been on those same exact charges put on house arrest that have cut off the ankle monitor, right. escaped, and we've been able to find them right. for years. Of course these guys are going to try that. And they're in that terrorists. time, they can do yeah. something else that's even worse then. Right. Yeah, and you're not going to have, like, spies inside their home monitoring what they do at all times. So there's limits to the effectiveness of intelligence gathering and monitoring. Judge said the prosecutors didn't prove to her that they were a threat to society. She's got to resign. We will see. Yeah. yeah. Ryan, thank you so thank much. You